Hello everyone. In uh, this lecture, we will discuss about uh, tandem affinity purification (TAP). TAP is a technique to determine protein-protein interactions. In earlier lecture, we have seen that most of the proteins in cell they do not work alone. Uh, in order to perform their function, protein associate with other proteins. So, in order to know what are the partners of a protein in cell, we can use many techniques. and uh, tap is one of the very common technique which is used in laboratory to find out partners of a protein in uh, in cellular conditions and uh, we have seen that there are different ways there are different techniques to find out protein protein interactions qualitatively and quantitatively and uh, one of those technique is tandem affinity purification tap this will discuss in today's lecture Uh, tap is a qualitative technique for uh, determination of protein protein interaction it means by using this technique you can find out you can find out and identify partners of a protein which are there in uh, in cellular conditions is a co purification technique and it purify protein complexes so in this technique you you take a protein of your interest and you insert that protein into a cell and uh, eventually inside the cell there are other cellular proteins so uh, the protein of interest will oligomerize will associate with other proteins and then you fish out the protein of your interest and find out the partners of the protein so it's a co-purification technique which purify protein complexes which are produced in cellular conditions but uh, there is a problem a uh, problem means uh, first proteins cannot be uh, inserted into the cell so but uh, dna can be uh, can be transferred to the cell so that's why uh, not the protein but uh, its uh, encoding gene corresponding gene is cloned into a vector and uh, that vector uh, construct is transferred to the cell so the cell produces the protein of interest inside the cytosol where this protein form complex with other cellular proteins so now you you break the cell membrane and take out that protein complex but another question problem here is that there are many proteins in the cell so how do you identify your protein of interest so in order to find out in order to recognize your protein you add a tag to the protein which is not present in any other cellular protein and that tag is called a tap tag here there are in fact many type of tags this is uh, one of the uh, tag used in uh, Uh, tandem affinity purification that's called tap tag so that is fused with the protein and the gene of tap tag along with the protein of interest that is cloned into a vector that vector is transformed into the cell and then the complex is uh, purified from the cytosolic extract so this use a tag that is called tap tag which is fused with the specific protein of your interest and uh, this tap tag consists of in fact two sequential affinity tag and uh, these two tags they are separated by a protease site so that it can be removed and that protease is tev protease here tobacco h virus protease which uh, which cleaves a sequence containing uh, glu any two xx means any amino acid then tyrosine x glutamine glycine or serine so tap protease hydrolyze after glutamine between glutamine glycine or glutamine serine and uh, because uh, this side this sequence which is specific for tev protease is generally not found in the in any other proteins and that's why it minimizes the risk of cleaving the protein of your interest or associated proteins so this protein of your interest is called bait protein for example here this one the target protein or bait protein it is fused with a tap tag so tap tag is a, a, a is con a tap tag contains a protein at the terminal called protein a so protein a is a protein which is uh, derived from staphylococcus aureus it is found in the bacteria and uh, it has a unique property of binding to fc region of antibodies that's how this bacteria can evade the presence of antibody in the host 
because antibodies are neutralized by protein A produced by the bacteria. So it binds to the antibody. So basically it's an antibody binding protein, protein A. In fact, it's been used in purification of antibodies. Then uh, you have a site, the sequence of amino acid where, uh, where you have a TEB protease site, this one. And uh, after this, you have another tag that's called calmodulin, calmodulin binding peptide. So you have three stretches of this, this called TAP tag. Three stretches, one is protein A, and another tag is uh, calmodulin binding peptide or CBP. And uh, these two tags, they are spaced by TEV cleavage site. So air protease can act and can uh, free these two tags. And uh, the CBP calmodulin binding peptide is now fused with the target protein that's called beta protein. So when you when you insert this sequence into cell, cell produce the same construct, a protein of your interest that's called beta protein along with the tap tag. So inside the cell, uh, this uh, target protein uh, tend to associate with the proteins it's having affinity for in cytosolic conditions. So those protein uh, are called preproteins. So this is beta protein and its partner, they are called preproteins. So inside the cell, it will form, uh, it form oligomeric association. And then using the tag, this uh, protein and its associated protein, this entire complex is purified from the cytosolic extract. So that's what is done in uh, TAP method. So this is say this is tap tag and it's a beta protein here. This entire DNA sequence corresponding to this tap tag and the beta protein that is cloned into a suitable vector and that vector is transformed into the host cell where you are looking for partners of the beta protein. And uh, inside the cell, in the cytosol, the cell produce this construct, tap tag and the beta protein also along with its own protein. So in the cell extract, it contains uh, this construct along with many other proteins in the cell. So this beta protein will bind to its partners. For example, here, so this beta protein is binding to many molecules here. Some of the molecules will be having a specific binding which really binds, but there will be some non-specifically weakly bound proteins as well. So here, so it forms a complex. So now the cell extract is passed through a column that column is having IgG beads, immunoglobulin antibodies. So what will happen because your tag, this tag contain protein A and protein A has affinity for IgG. So this protein A will be retained by IgG beads and along with protein A you have entire tag, beta protein and all the preproteins. Okay, so they are purified from other cells. Other, other, cellular, other cellular proteins. Now, there are some known specifically bound protein also, so it is washed extensively with the buffer. As a result, only specifically bound protein to the bait, they are retained. For example, here there are four, four partners of this protein of interest. So these four would be retained, uh, rest will be washed off. Then, uh, this uh, uh, TEV protease is used here. So TV protease, after addition of TV protease, uh, this is uh, uh, here, uh, the TV protease will hydrolyze its site present in the TAP tag. So as a result, you have a TAP tag after TV protease, means it will be having a CBP, calmodulin binding peptide. This is a uh, beta protein and four specifically bound the partner protein, the preproteins. Now this extract is passed to the second level of purification step where uh, the column contain calmodulin beads. Calmodulin beads, calmodulin is a protein which binds to calcium and uh, in presence of calcium it binds to a calcium binding peptide also which is present in the tap tag. So here calcium is used in fact so in presence of calcium, calmodulin beads or another affinity column that bind to the leftover tag and the uh, protein complex. So like this one. So this is CBP. CBP will bind 
to the carmodulin bead in presence of calcium and rest other protein which are known specifically present which are mixing the sample they are washed off so there are two steps of purification and that help in washing off known specifically bound protein in the sample so then uh, uh, the carmodulin bead is binding to the complex the complex is removed by using edta edta will chelate calcium ion here and in absence of calcium ion the cbp the cbp tag and this is a uh, bait protein along with its four partner that is liberated that is released that's uh, eluted from the matrix from the affinity column so you have a complex now this complex contain a bait protein and four four of the pre proteins so you have purified this complex now the next objective is because you cannot see it at this moment you need to find out uh, what are these four proteins which are associating with your protein of interest so to do that uh, for example these are the two steps of affinity purification and we see that after first step you have got this is a band of interest this is a band of band containing uh, bait protein along with all four pre proteins it will having some molecular weight whatever and then it has some non specifically bound protein non specific some adulteration some mixing is also there after first step and when you do second step of affinity purification you will see that this this band has disappeared so you have pure complex here so that is done in native page in native jelly lactophoresis so that it does not dissociate uh, the complex which is naturally formed in the cytosolic environment so you see after second step you have a pure pure complex now this complex contain again remember this complex contain a bait protein and its associated partner in this case we have four associated partner for example so there are five must be five protein in this band but this is native page native page cannot disrupt uh, those non covalent interactions which are responsible for formation of this oligomeric complex so then in order to uh, see them uh, uh, you run sds page denaturing page and when you run the denaturing page you will see there are four bands sorry five bands so out of these five bands it shows that one is protein of your interest the bait protein and uh, four protein four band represent the pre proteins here so one would be the bait that you can easily identify because protein of interest is well known and for example this is protein of interest so this we know this is your protein of interest this is bait protein now your objective is to identify these rest of the four pre proteins which associate with the bait protein and for that there are many methods for example this is bait protein so this we don't have to identify it because we already know it now we need to identify rest of the these other proteins so there are different ways to identify them the one is uh, this can be cut the band can be cut and after cutting the band it can be sand for uh, chemical sequencing the edman degradation method we have seen that earlier the edman degradation method of protein sequencing the sequencing can be found out and from the sequence protein can be identified this is one way second way is uh, mass spectroscopy based because edman require much more uh, is cumbersome with time consuming and require very high amount of protein in order to sequence it fully so ms is a best method Uh, to identify a protein and one of the method ms based method is called peptide mass fingerprinting pmf where this protein is hydrolyzed into peptides and those peptides uh, spectra is used in order to identify the protein so this also will discuss in separate lecture about peptide mass fingerprinting or uh, the another method could be ms ms tandem mass spectroscopy where uh, you can you can fragment the protein and then drive the entire sequence of the protein this also will discuss in some other lecture so these are the three common methods very common methods which are employed to identify protein so you can identify all the proteins now and uh, then you can conclude that this bait protein is associated with these four proteins in order to perform its function in the cytosolic condition and that was the objective of this technique to find out to identify the partners of partners of a protein 
in cytosol which are that's what is required for performing a function by that protein so uh, tandem affinity purification has advantages like prior knowledge of composition is not required you don't need to know what are the partners of the uh, given protein you just just uh, make a construct with the tag and you transform into the host cell and then purify it it's a very rapid purification method under native conditions is simple to perform and you get very high yield relatively and uh, it reduce non specific binder because there are two steps of purification so non specifically bound protein uh, they are removed by this technique but this also have disadvantages so like a tag might interfere with the binding of the protein because you are tagging a protein of your interest for example you have a protein and you are tagging that with the c terminal c terminal is having tap tag and this bait protein bind to the pre protein using c terminal only in that case because tap tag is already there on the c terminal so pre protein may not bind so that's how tap may interfere with the protein binding in such cases what one can do you can uh, you can change the tag you can put this to the n terminal instead of c terminal so one can try in, in a different location of the tag in order to make the method succeed or uh, tag may also not be sufficiently exposed from the affinity beads we are using affinity beads then you have tag and you have bait protein so sometimes if this tag is too small the bait protein is not sufficiently exposed to the outside environment so that pre protein can bind so in these conditions one may try to increase the length of the tag or you may add some more residues in between so the bait protein is exposed to the solvent properly and uh, there are also possibility that uh, tv protease may cleave protein of interest or your uh, pre proteins although it's uh, unlikely but it's still theoretically possibility is there if the uh, cleavage site is present in any other protein tv protease will also hydrolyze that and uh, it may not be suitable for screening transient protein interactions uh, transient protein interaction means the proteins when they come together for a very short period of time so in that cases this method will not work so only if they are proteins are strongly together for longer period or permanently together th those can be fished out using this method from cytosolic environment